Since you live in the community nearest to Slab City, we were just wondering, could you tell us what your perspective is on Slab City? Like, what do you know about it? Uh, depends. If they are in, um, they are knowing drugs, they, the life is good. But most of the people in there is, is really good. Uh, they don't bother too much and they are, do their business. And they come here a few times and uh, they are good people. And then um, we, don't have any problem with them. The way they want to live is the, is the only the life they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. I don't see a hole anywhere. I can look at the camera. We're like shit. So I tried to celebrate it and then I fucked up and well, evidently I had some uh been out in the slabs for about three months now. Hi, I'm Peter Pasolacqua and this is Papito, my dog. <laughs> and uh, how long have Careful. you been living out here? Yeah. In the uh, two, two and a half years. I'm Mama D and I've been out here approximately five years. All right, my name's Kyle Goldsmith. Uh, I have not been in slab cities long. I've been here for about six weeks, going on my seventh. Oh, I was told to look for LARP. I'm like, well, nice to meet you. My name's LARP. <laughs> the reason I came out to the slabs is to, um, follow my career as an artist mm -hmm. and to get famous. I get a lot more exposure out here in Slab City than I ever did in Portland, Oregon. In Portland, I'm just another face in Saturday Market, but out here, oh, I'm a god. I did the gem show and then uh, I used the money that I made to help uh, register a, a, like an RV to go to the, the, the Rainbow Gathering. We showed up there the day before Valentine's Day celebrated Valentine's Day and then they said, all right, everybody get the fuck out. And it's like, oh shit, where do I go? And the bus that I uh, had a ride with, we either had the option of going to either a Hopi Indian Reservation to help them out or go to Slab City. And there was already like a convoy of a lot of other hippies going to the Indian Res, so we didn't want to like, ah, we don't want to be a whole bunch of drunk and shit shows fucking disrespecting sacred space. So lo and behold, we freaking pulled the bus up. It's been so much fun living here. Oh my God, I just, I can't even believe two years has gone by. It's been so quick and just all, it's like an, uh, an amazing chain of events is happening to me. Just uh, a great thing after great thing after great thing just keeps on happening. I love it out here. To the uninitiated, Slab City can seem like something out of a movie. An anarchist's paradise, a place to get away from the woes and struggles of regular societal living. The last free place, as many have called it over the years. The rich history of this small community begins all the way back in the 1940s during World War II, when this small patch of desert was known as Camp Dunlap, a marine base used to train soldiers. The base was decommissioned soon after the war ended, and by the 1960s, the land went back to the state of California. About nine miles away from the Salton Sea, Slab City has attracted people from around the world for its free nature and open-arm approach to alternative lifestyles. However, the freedom attributed to the slabs can be miscommunicated to those unfamiliar with the community. I don't know if I would ever be able to find a place like this that you could live as free as you do here without like people kicking you out, you know? I mean, I'm just not sure where else in the world this exists. 
Yeah, the whole free to be you and everything. It's like, it is not lawless. We, we have police here, just like in the police station right in town. Um, <laughs> But from a lawless perspective, I think it's just that there's no regulations. You get away with like living like this and nobody's going to come and go, you can't live like that. Where if you tried to do this in a town somewhere, they would shut you down. Freedom out here. Yeah. And, but you're not free from consequence. No. You know, they say the last free place, you know, in America is free rent. Okay. Not freedom to act like an asshole. Oh, there's so much freedom out here. For example, look what I'm wearing today. If I lived in the suburbs, I couldn't wear a belly dancer dress <laughs> and my band leader jacket, and my tassels. I could wear this, but the balance would be so, I would be so far out of balance with everybody else that it almost wouldn't be acceptable. You know, they might accept it, but it would be strange and foreign to them. The freedom in Slab City, you can wear whatever you want to wear. Here's the other thing in the suburbs. I've always smoked pot, but if you have a job, you kind of have to conceal that. Like I'm getting stoned at seven in the morning and shit, you know, and then smoking another bowl right before I go into work or whatever. And that could kind of be frowned upon in the suburbs. But out here in Slab City, you have the freedom to sm smoke weed as much as you want. You're free to be you, but I'm also free to check you if you being you is not copacetic. Like, oh yeah, the last free place in the world. Bitch, yeah, we, we might not pay rent, but stay out in the sun in 120 degrees for over a week. We do pay a price. It's just not money. It's sweat and blood and fucking tears. You must understand, in Slab City, people are like vampires. They will not come into your camp unless you invite them in the first time. Since I don't do meth, I don't kind of co-mingle with those circles. In Slab City, Whatever drug you do, you kind of find that circle of people and that's who you hang out with. I'm an artist and a pot smoker. I find my ilk to hang out with. Given that, meth doesn't really affect me because I don't hang around with people who do meth. But it's kind of accepted in the society. Here's the thing is we live in a town where everybody has a purpose. Even though they're high on meth doesn't mean they're not good at digging you a ditch or, or some shit like that. Everybody out here has a purpose. You know? Yeah, you don't know your neighbors out in Babylon. In San Diego, I've lived there nine years. I don't know my neighbors. My neighbors don't know me. And I can't stand being there. Yeah. The suburbs was like a fortress. People would close their blinds, lock their door behind them, not answer their door. You know, now that they have security cameras on the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In Slab City, I don't have uh, any gates. I don't have anything that really locks. <laughs> I'm all the way over there by East Jesus, and I know good friends of mine that live at the library. That's about almost like a mile walk that I will walk to meet my friends. I bet you don't know the fucking person who lives four doors down from you in your, your block, do you? I don't know the person that lives right next to me, honestly. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't want to call this place Slab City. I want to call it Slavunity, because we're a fucking community. There, there are people that come that fit in just fine, and then there's others that come here to, you know, they, they hear about Slab City and they want to come watch the zoos, at, at, at the, the animals at the zoo, and, you know, they can get obnoxious. and They shut our water off. The city took the water away from Slab City. And so people are struggling so hard out here, and people are dying. You know, we lost a lot of people last year to heat exhaustion and, and dehydration. There's politicians in Washington that need to come out here to Slab City. If not to speak to me, literally look at what inflation does to people in this country. It would take millions upon millions to clean up Slab City. Nobody wants that responsibility. The government doesn't even want the responsibility of it. It's all neglected land. The people living out in the slabs come here for a myriad of reasons, whether it be artistic freedom, a free place to camp, or somewhere to do drugs. However, there are still struggles that come with the lifestyle the people out here have chosen. While some of the problems the community faces are out of their control, it is also clear that there is a lot to be said about the safety of the people who live in Slab City. With no rules come situations you wouldn't find anywhere else. And then here comes Dan, running at the front door. Superman kicked him the fuck out. 
and then he went to go around the back, and I thought he was trying to go around the back to light it on fire. I'm like, hey. You might want to grab, she has broken glass. Oh, oh. She tried to put some in her mouth. Just... Yeah, this is Baba. Oh, oh, I know what happened. The little, uh, the little in circle. Ah, 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 Tabby. No, no. I know it's pretty, but don't. Oh, she got some. But no, yeah, and then, uh, well, no, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's the little nipple thing, so that's oh. probably why she's handing it to me, because it's not mm -hmm. uh, working correctly. But no, yeah, so uh, I was like, hey, you want to light something on fire? How about me? And I took lighter to my pants, thinking I was wearing pants, but I was actually wearing, like, a synthetic fucking skirt. And, like, where's the other one? But like I said, there was, I had a burn here, no, that. While spending time in the slabs and getting to know the folks who have come to call it their home, we learned a lot about their communal understanding of how to run a community. A phrase we heard multiple times throughout our time there was places that were referred to as Babylon, although no one came to explain what that meant until right before we left. Babylon is the idea of society, the towns, cities, and rest of the world outside of the slabs. This community on the outskirts of Babylon has some of the most tight-knit and kindest people I've ever met, which might just be the default when you spend your time living in a desert in triple-digit temperatures. While there are concerning elements, and the clear fact that this lifestyle isn't for everyone, for the people that call Slab City their home, it couldn't be better. It isn't the place that matters, it's the people. And the people are what make it a slim unity. <laughs> I have a place in San Diego, and I pay the bills there and everything, but still prefer to be here. Mm -hmm. It's the people. The people keep bringing us back mm -hmm. and stuff. It's the, the community. Well, I said, if somebody's like, Oh, Lerp just whooped someone's ass last night. They're like, well, who did they rape? Right? Because I, I don't get violent, but I will defend and protect. Like, you don't fuck with me. I mean, you can fuck with me all you want. You don't fuck with mine. Or don't fuck with my morals. Here's the thing. In Slab City, when you are called to Slab City, it has such a strong gravitational pull that there's nothing you can do to escape. It's, it's Once Slab City summons you, you have to come here. Uh, everybody, everybody here has had the same experience. At the same time, when Slab City's done with you, you have to go. So I'll be here until Slab City has decided that I've done my work and it's time for me to go. Like, there's no other place in the world where you can go, like, if you want to help people, this is the place to go. Because I hear what it is, is there's a lot of people that when they fuck up and they feel ashamed, so then they come out here because they feel like this is the only place they can be. And like I said, I like helping people. If I had a message for our society today, sit down long enough to realize that love is an action word and it may cause you to sacrifice.